Welcome back, my name's Rob Lang and this is my co-op exploration game, Clomper. What on earth is this nonsense? Well, we'll come back to that, but first let's finish off talking about performance. Thank you for all the ideas, feedback and support from my performance tuning video. There were some great tips in the comments. I didn't get to all of them this week, but I'll shout out to the ones that I did. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get on with it. Both Tom Wayland and Games In House recommended that I reduce the number of materials to reduce the number of set pass calls. This is really good advice. So I'd started a thread over on the Unity forums and Arno here very kindly replied if you're using SRP then it's fine to have several materials in your scene. SRP batch will still use several draw call but using a fast code pass. So that's great to know. Having said that, even the humble straight pipe was using four materials. You have one for the inside, one for the outside, and then one for each end. I needed one for each end because when the mouse hovered over, I needed to change one of the materials to glow orange so that you could see that that was the pipe that was selected. Well, I found a different way of solving that. On the left hand side now, you can see that we've got this UV map. It looks pretty big on the screen, but it's only two pixels wide. If I select all of the polygons on this end then you'll see that they all fit into this one pixel here and I did that by going to UV snapped pixels and center and that makes life a lot easier and you can scale them all the way down so they all fit into one the other end you'll see is actually down in this pixel here so they're separated by one line of pixels and that's very important to my solution I'll come back to that then we've got another material for here and another material for the bottom. Now I know this looks a little bit like a very poor texture atlas and I may come back to that in the future but I just wanted to solve pipes for now. So let's now go into Unity and see what the shader looks like. In Unity I removed all of my materials and merged the shaders that they used into one and then all the pieces of the shaders that you can see over here, we've got delete, we've got damage, we've got debug and selected at the top. And then I pick the right state using Boolean logic here and a whole bunch of Booleans over on the blackboard here. So let's look at the most important one, which is selected port. This is the one that was quite tricky to do. So for selecting a port, and a port is the ends of the pipe here, I want to first of all tell it that it is selected. So I can do that using a boolean here and you can see that only one end is selected well that's all very well but how do I select this end or if I have more ends to my pipe like the T pipe then how does that work well the magic is in a 2d array of masks so this is a mask here which is letting through only the very top line of pixels here on the texture so you can see the output here this one here is orange now if I want to select the next one then what I do is, is I just pop over to here and select the next one in, in there and then that will select the next mask in the array of masks. So you can see this second line here is down and then once it's all merged together you can see that orange one is there and that would cover off this one. So this is good for up to eight different ports which is the most you can really have on a pipe. And here you can see it working in the editor. Now for creation of the pipes I didn't use that shader and the reason is creation uses a transparent shader and I found that if you make everything a transparent shader all of these pipes here then what will happen is that will put an enormous amount of load on the system when really you only create one at a time so that's okay for that to use a different shader. Moving on from pipes, I showed you last week how we could improve the efficiency of the map by changing some of the code. So if we just pop back into there, I discovered that my update wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. And here we are in the method that we recapped. If you missed this, then I've got a little card up in the corner of the screen. Click on that and it will take you through to the video. So this was an improvement that we did and it calls hit transform tag. But this did not give me the performance improvement I was expecting. So what we're going to do is look at how I then found out why this is nonsense and this is not a particularly good idea. So let's head back into Unity and the thing I'm going to use here is this button right in the middle, Deep Profile. So I've started up the game with Deep Profile running and you can see that the frames per second is right down in the tens and this is because Deep Profiling has added a load of telemetry code to your own code. So it's no good for benchmarking but it's really good for what I'm about to show you. 
So if I stop the game, I'm now looking for the fixed update method just like before. And you can see I've already found fixed update in map. And you can see here, it's still performing garbage collections at 52.9 kilobytes. Now if I come into here, as far as I'm concerned, this is not doing any kind of garbage collection at all. All it's doing is a comparison of one string to another. But that is performing a garbage collection. So if we keep coming down into here, set height map, and then I'll see here I've got this garbage collection down the bottom here. Get component, get tag. What? So get component, get tag calls the game object. And the game object is an object, so it gets allocated. So this is actually performing an allocation of memory. And that surprised me quite, I'm still surprised to be honest. So if I come in here, the way to fix this is they have provided a method that does compare tag. And that's it, that's how you fix that problem. So use compare tag and there'll be no garbage collection allocation. So once again, thanks to Arno on the Unity forums for pointing me out to the SRP Batcher. Now you can see here it's on the top left of the screen and it's just a script that you add to an empty game object and you put it on your scene and it will start working out how well the SRP Batcher is working. And you can see here it's split up into two sections. At the top you've got the CPU rendering time and then at the bottom you've got the standard code path. But the best thing is, is that you can work out how well the batcher is actually working by pressing F9. So it's currently on, this is the batcher doing well, it's 11 milliseconds rendering time and if we turn it off, it will have a quick moment and gather it's now taking 30 milliseconds. So this is without batching at all. So I'm saving 20 milliseconds or two thirds roughly by just putting the batcher on. So I went from 25 to 30 frames a second all the way up to between 40 and 50 and I'm very happy with that. It needs to go further, I need to get it up to 60 and it will just about do that when I'm not in the editor but for now that's just about fine for me. I've also turned on shadows. Now seeing as I have so many dynamic objects in my scene there was no point using light maps and shadow maps. I didn't really get many frames a second back so all of my lights are set to dynamic and a big thanks to games in house on Garrett's discord for pointing that out to me. So drawing a line underneath performance I decided to start work on the next feature which is the periscope. Here it is, a player will stand underneath it, press a button, the hat will come down on the top of them and then they'll be able to see a little view from the outside, not too distant, only about 100 meters but it will cover enough just around the edge of the ladybug there that you'll be able to do some fine navigation, say between those hills, with a bit more certainty you can with this long range map. And that's as far as I got this week. So thank you very much for watching through to the end. If you have any ideas, please do stick them down in the comments. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And if you want to find out how the periscope turns out, then do hit subscribe. Until next time, bye bye.